back to another episode of the Pressing Forward podcast. Um, today's episode, we have a special guest, um, former classmate of mine, also two-time junior Pan American champion, former Olympian as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing today? I'm really blessed. I'm good. Um, super healthy. Can't can't ask for more. Most definitely, most definitely. And I just want to um, just first and foremost thank you for you know taking the time out to um, come on the show and really like share your experiences, your knowledge, and all that. So, no, I appreciate you having me here. Um, so before we start, before we start, I'm super proud of the fact that you're even starting something like this. And it's a it's, for me, it's important because you're putting out a platform for just these type of discussions and from athletes' perspectives. And I'm sure eventually it's probably going to be non-athletes given their experience and things like that. So. This is a really cool thing, and I think it's super dope that you started this. So, kudos to you. Clap it up for you. <laughs> Most definitely appreciate that for sure. All right, so um, you're originally from New York, right? Yes. Originally yeah. from New York, um, but you are of Puerto Rican descendant as well. Your grandfather. Yes. Can you explain your upbringing and kind of what your background has has been like? Yes. Well, um, I was born and raised in New York um, with my four siblings. I'm the fourth out of five children. Um, Raised by my mom. Um, well, I'm the fourth of the five children between my mom and dad. So there's five between, you know, between them both. Uh, okay. But we were raised by our mom in New York. Um, we eventually moved to Staten Island, to, like pretty much live majority of the time while we were living in New York. And um, yeah, pretty much we were, grew up together. Things weren't always super easy, of course, you know, but we had each other. We had our faith, you know, we kept our vision clear and got through it. And we had our, um, our challenges and moments, but you know what? We grew up together. We did what we had to do. New York is one of the greatest places to me. So Definitely. super, uh, super amazing. Uh, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't easy, but we had each other. And so that, that uh, upbringing was super amazing to me. It was fun. We had our good times, but yeah. Um, so yeah, when we moved to Staten Island, um, I started to, I started the sport in Taekwondo when I was like five years old. Uh, five dish um, along with my siblings and uh, my mom put us in there because you know when we moved she wanted us to stay together and keep us away from the streets and keep us away from the because there's a lot of us you know and it's only her oh, so to, uh, to control five kids at once when you're on your own like that it's a little difficult but hey wait kudos to her though because it's a strong super intelligent resilient woman so she, she um, like much she respect well. to my mom but yep. Very well, thank God, thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she put us in uh, Taekwondo because she was in martial arts growing up and that was a super important thing for her when she was growing up. So she thought it'd be great for us as siblings and just great for us, like I said, to keep us active and busy. Um, she has her martial arts background. She did, she's a black belt in Goju Karate. Yeah. And and yeah, she's like two, but yeah, she's awesome. So um, she put us there and that's pretty much where it started for me in the sport aspect. Um, yeah, so. It's pretty much uh, where we grew up and how we grew up around that. Yeah. So even just listening to you, it sounds like, um, you know, uh, your mother is a big, you know, inspiration for you. Somebody who's really, you know, been able not only to guide you, but also your five siblings as well. Um, Four siblings. I'm oh, the, there's five of oh, us. Five, yeah. Oh, five, I'm the okay. fourth out of five. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Okay. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so in terms of just getting into the sport as well, like, did you initially like the sport when you got into it? Like, how what was that like? I mean, for me, yeah, you know, I think initially, because a little as a little kid, I kind of was like one of those shy ones. Like, I'm not sure if I'd consider it shy. I just wasn't too talkative to people. I was just like, uh, you know, introvert, my introvert, super, okay. in, super independent. I like to say, you know, okay, like, independent. Okay, got gotcha. you. Know, because you know, you have a lot of siblings, and everybody has different personalities. There's different things, and for sure, yeah. I was one who was super like observant. I like mm-hmm. to observe and be around. So, but um there's two aspects to the sport where it's like the sports side and then there's the martial arts side. So of course we start the martial arts side first. You don't just, some places, you know, they just jump you into this, the Olympic sparring aspect of it. But for us, we learned the martial arts first, like the discipline and the perseverance, you know, all those things that Mm -hmm. comes with martial arts. So we learned that first. And um, that aspect, I enjoyed it because it's something, you know, as little kids, you enjoy that discipline and you enjoy the structure and you enjoy achieving things so for me I like it I like to achieve things so Mm -hmm. for me that was a good fit um but then when we started to do the sparring when they started to allow us to fight and things like that of course I love it because like you get to you get to fight you get to you know you get to beat out you get to kick people while getting (laughs) in trouble you get to punch and kick so for me I enjoyed it and then they started to put me in competitions like around when I was like seven 
ish, okay. seven ish, and they started putting me in competition. I loved it because, you know, this is something I practiced with my siblings. I enjoyed it that time, and then I enjoy it to get a medal for it, you know, to get that little thing. So, yeah, I did um, the Pumse, which is like the forms and okay. the sparring aspect. I did both. And I enjoyed it because I like getting the medals. Like, why well, get one gold medal and you can get two? So, right, right. For me, that, that was my thought process as a kid. So, yeah, I enjoyed it. And um, then it just took off from there. It just um, every year we did something different, something new. We had nationals and things like that. So it just became bigger and bigger. And obviously, as you keep going through the years, you have to find a different way to enjoy it. So, yeah. 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 Um, and just even listening to you, it sounds like you, you are super competitive growing up. Okay. And me too. I'm, I'm one of I'm one of I'm one of five. So naturally, everybody in our family, everybody's just naturally competitive. So, um, uh, even just you, I know you have a, a younger brother that also fights as well, right? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Sure. Um, and all my siblings competed. Sorry to cut you off. All my siblings competed, and they have their, but each of them stopped at a certain level because okay. they had different objectives. You know, different okay. things. So, gotcha, but yeah, gotcha. he competes again. Yeah. Okay. And you, you mentioned one of the things as well was uh, the mental aspect of it that you guys learned first before actually fighting. Can you like yes. explain what that process was like, what that, what that entails? Well, for, for me personally, there's two sides to it. Um, the mental aspect I learned at home and the mental aspect we learned in the martial arts, you know, um, from, from me, the competitor side, like when we're learning and we're training in our um, dojong, that's what they call the, the training area in the dojong. Okay. It was just, uh, well, my grandmaster who taught me was, he's a, he was a correctional officer and um, a Marine and stuff like that. So he took the street seriously, you know, mm. he knows what it's like for jails and stuff. So the self-defense aspect, he turned that type of um, fight for your life, you know what I mean? That type mm. of energy where like they can't take you down because if they take you down, that's, you know, that's survival. your life that you just, lost. yeah, survival. So it's like, that's how he kind of trained us in the fighting game. You know what I mean? When we're turning it from martial arts to sport, it's like, you know what, yo, you can't go down because if she wins that medal, you're going home with nothing. And you can't go down because that means you lost, you know, that means you lost your life in the street type of energy. So um, that mentality was what it is. It's like, you know, you go get them, you do what you got to do. Now that's from like younger, um, the younger, like in the beginning. So you put that in your head where it's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta win. You can't lose because if you lose, it's not good for you, but um then obviously as you get older it, it, it kind of adapts you know you kind of adapt when it's more in the professional world you change it a little bit obviously you have to still have the the mentality where it's like you know you can't take me not gonna take me down type of energy but um when you're in the professional thing things are different when you're fighting in adults you know people who have experienced this time people have different movements and the game changed a lot so it's a lot of different things but the mentality pretty much stays the same but um but at home uh my mom always kind of reiterated to me like you know you're the best until somebody beats you, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. Each fight, you know, but even if let's just say somebody has even before, you still go in there with that energy, you know what right, I mean? Because it's a right. new, person, new person, new thing. The the that's just what she was trying to get into my head. You know, you're you're the what you're the you're the one to beat. So they have to beat you in order to be, you know. So um, but yeah, the mentality is pretty much that. It's like you're the best until you beat me. And um, if they happen to beat me, you just you go back and you get get your fix your things, fix your work. And but you have to be able to see what you did wrong. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what she put in us mentally, too, where it's like you have to be able to step back. And that's what makes people that's what she had taught me that makes people the great fighters versus the those who are just doing the sport just to do it. It's like mm-hmm. some people I meet a lot of people who talk to me and ask me like, you know, well, how do you think about this? How do you react to that? But I tell them I'm able to step back and say, dang. I did that. I made this step wrong. I kicked this way. I went this way wrong. I shouldn't, you know, but then I fix it. But a lot of people are in denial. Like there's like, there's contact. It's a full contact sport. There's contact to the head and things like that. So some people would get hit in the head, for example, and lose the match or something. And they would say like, no, she didn't touch me. She didn't touch me. It's like, no, she did. But you have to tell yourself that you have to acknowledge that. And that's pretty much, I think that was a big part of how I grew as an athlete was to be able to accept that. Like if somebody, Mm -hmm. not accept it, You know what I mean? To accept the fact, like the reality of things, like, you know, so I can fix it because right, if you're stuck, right. if you don't fix it, you're stuck. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah, mentally, that's pretty much it. And also obviously mentally you have to, I keep my, uh, I always have my faith in God always. So mm-hmm. I always, uh, I never pray before, like when I pray before competitions, I never pray to like hurt people or anything like that. But I always pray that we all do our best. We all get the job done. We can't do what we work for. And 
that's pretty much my mentality. It keeps me calm <laughs> when I have to compete. So that's pretty much how it works for me. Yeah, I like that. I like that. You draw it on a lot of a lot of subjects there in terms of just um, one having the mental fortitude, obviously, to be able to accept your losses and not only just accepting your losses, but knowing where you have to improve on top of those. Um, and yeah. I'm sure the game, the game in itself comes with a lot of adversities and and things that you kind of have to overcome. And, you know, you mentioned your faith being a big one that you rely on in terms of, um, you know, keeping you keeping you going, essentially. Can you, like, explain where that comes from? Like, was that your upbringing? Like, where, did, where does that come from? Definitely in my upbringing. You know, like I said, growing up, we didn't always have, like, easy times, you know, but my mom has always reiterated to us that you got to keep your faith and stay on God's path and just know that what we're going through is what's getting us to the greater times. You know, that's what's what we're going through is just a challenge in the moment. It's not forever. It's just something that we have to maintain our faith and stay um, steady, you know what I mean? Stay, of course, to what we're supposed to do, keep our faith and just be strong like that. So I think that um, in living life, having that mentality in life translated to my sport life, if you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. like I said, you have your ups and downs, you win, you lose, or sometimes, you know, win how you want. Sometimes you lose, you know, in a clutch situation and things like that happen. But I think um, the faith really plays a big part for me. It's, it's a huge part. And like I said, it's from my upbringing. My mom just always drilled that into us you know it wasn't necessarily by force but you know it just came natural you know she spoke to us about it she just let us you know have our own thoughts and let us you know and I think that was a good thing that she did too where she just let us have our own um um feelings about it like you know I've seen some people like push push religions and right, push right. You know, and she didn't really do that to us she just you know she obviously spoke and we prayed and stuff like that but she kind of also let us figure it out on our own you know what I mean so I think that was a, a good thing that she did too but yeah it's most definitely a huge part for me huge part yeah and I think that, that's that's something that I truly you know admired about you and just knowing knowing you've um like you've always been one that hasn't really shied away from you know showing that side of yourself um mm -hmm. but uh in terms of just like um if I were to ask you like what have you found to be um, I guess the biggest hurdle or challenge um, that you've had to overcome pertaining to your sport. <laughs> but for the sport, yeah, the sport aspect, um, I would say, I would say after the 2016 Olympics, mm. right? After that one, I didn't win the medal. I didn't, uh, that's obviously something you don't plan on doing, right? You don't right. go there with the thought process of like, I'm going to lose and things like that. So for me, that was a little, it was a little dig for me to have to dig deep and to get to overcome, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cause somebody like me, I'm used to like, when I, um, for our sports year, it's all year. It's like an all season thing. And, um, from when I went from juniors, I was, you know, a junior world, two time junior world champion, Pan American, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I got all of it and I did it all. And so I know it's possible. Right. And then when you transfer to adults, when I transferred there, I was still winning. I was doing good. And I was on a pace where I was just going and going and going so for me I wasn't used to taking you know taking losses and stuff like that yeah, so it's like yeah. I was going through it and going through it and then uh qualified super young too like you know and that time too qualifying for that time was um was a little challenge it was a challenge too because people were telling me like when I was training and stuff we had camps and things they're like oh you're young so don't worry about it if you don't qualify it's okay but I was looking at them like what like why would yeah. you even say that to me you know yeah, I was mature right. enough to understand you know what I mean I'm mature enough to hear when you're trying to say something to me. So like they were trying to tell me, you know, you, it's okay if you don't win. They're older, they're bigger, you know, yeah, they yeah. here. And I didn't want to hear that. And, he wasn't you know, trying to hear it. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. And I explained to my mom, I, heard, I told my mom that, and she was saying to me like, look, you're there for a reason. Well, God put you there for a reason. And God wouldn't put you in a situation you couldn't handle. So that's what she told me. And basically that's how the energy I went in there competing against them and they didn't beat me so, so I qualified thank that's God right. but my, the energy I went in was with uh, my faith and she said because what my mom told me was God wouldn't put you in a situation if you couldn't handle it but um so I worked hard to qualify and then to work up to the Olympics you had some you know I had some wait I don't, I, don't, I don't mean to cut you off I just want people to know like the true process behind getting into olympics it's not like an easy process like this no 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 no. of course it's not. the best of the best i'm just, just want yeah, people yeah, to know yeah, that yeah. Like, you really gotta not. in our sport it's only like top 16 athletes top it's crazy. Uh, like it's seven, crazy almost you know they put like wild cards and things in there but normally the normal numbers like top 16 people so it is the best of the best you know what i mean and 
um, everybody, for me, I was too young to qualify by like, we have a different system to qualify. So mm -hmm. for me at the time, I just turned adult. So I didn't have the time to like, get ranking points or anything mm -hmm. like that to qualify by ranking. So um, I had to go to our qualifiers for our Pan American region because everybody has their own qualifying. So um, I qualified to be able to go to that. So I went and that's how I qualified. But it's also um, without that, it's, there's also other aspects to it. Like I said, you have to qualify by ranking and points and you have to, that means you have to be competing all the time, like mm. to go get your points and have to win. So it's not an easy process at all. Our sport is just, it's the same as everything else. It's not an easy process. Um, so like, and like you said, competing against them is the best in the world. So it's not like you're fighting people who have no uh, fight in them. You're fighting people who fight. <laughs> so mm. it's, it's a uh, difficult, but um, yeah. So I think the, the biggest hurdle I think was after 2016. And I also think one of the hurdles also was during this time, like during the pandemic a little bit. Okay. okay. Um, I, I'd, li I'd like to say that kind of equal to me. That's why I'm going to give like two because um, after the 2016, like I said, there was a lot of little things that people don't know. You know, there's a lot of things that you have to do and go through and stuff to get to that point. So um, after that, it was really tough for me to take that. And then um, I feel like, there were certain points, you know, because when you become a professional athlete, well, okay, let me start with this. I was doing this more professionally, like during my high school career, right? Like, uh, yeah. I've been, yeah, I've been traveling before I got to high school a little bit. Um, so when I started traveling, I was like 11 years old almost, or like 12 almost. And then when I got to high school, it started to pick up more. I remember so that. I was, you, yeah, class, I was like, like one day, other day. And you I'm gone the next day. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, you know, at the same time, that mentally is a challenge too, because, you know, you have to hold down your education and you have to hold down the sport. And for me, I was doing it as if I was a full-time athlete yeah. and I had like, you know, I had things like that going. So it was like a job for me. So I had to do what I have to do. Same time balance what I have to do in school. And obviously my mom's not going to let me not finish high school. She's like, right. no, nah, you got to put that work in and get the high do you It's going to be harder for you, but that's, you're built for it. Basically right. what she, mm -hmm. so she said, get it done. So and shout out to the Port Richmond teachers because it wasn't for them. <laughs> <laughs> they helped okay. me out, man. Right. But um, yeah, so uh, going through that process, like training and training and fighting and traveling all this time and then uh, getting to that Olympics and then losing for, you know, after all those things I had to do, it was really tough because it was it was super hard. But mm -hmm. um, the COVID aspect, it was very difficult too because like I said, our sport, um, just as an athlete, I'm sure you understand like with the ages, you know, we're not getting younger. We're not, we're, you know, we're not sitting still. We're not yeah, suspended yeah. in time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it just felt like time was wasting. You know, I was mm -hmm. just sitting there. I was just feeling like time was just going by. Like, obviously you find things to, to do to change yeah. what's going on, but man, it was, it was a lot. So, um, I think that for me was a challenge, but, um, between then and from the 2016 Olympics, um, there was like a little, a little moment when it came to my, um, tapping into that uh, my faith you know mm -hmm. what I mean because yeah. it was a hard time for me to like understand what like why type of questions I had you know right. why this why that what's going on with this and I wasn't really praying too much or talking to you know wasn't chatting it up with God too much anymore it was just I was just in my own you in know head. Yeah. I was yeah. just in my head and not any like not to be like I didn't believe anymore but it was more of like a thing where I just didn't understand things so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that time frame from then to like when COVID started was very difficult to like for me to have to um, figure things out with myself. But thankfully, I feel like COVID, I'm not happy COVID came. Yeah, nobody, yeah, yeah. nobody is. But um, for me, it was a good moment for me because now I had to sit still and I had to think about everything I had before I was on the move. Like I yeah, was yeah, you know, yeah. feeling what I felt inside, but still, you know, Still moving traveling around, and yeah. competing and moving around sometimes it didn't feel like competing and I had to anyway you know there's moments that you know it wasn't the sport didn't be wasn't fun for me for a little bit yeah. so that's started to get eat me more so I'm just doing stuff but I never had time to sit and like think about everything and feel everything from the moment from 2016 to, to then like I didn't have any time to sit still and think mm -hmm. so when COVID happened, I had nothing but <laughs> nothing but that time, but time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to sit down yeah. and just feel everything, take everything in, figure out what, if I'm still, you know, if I still love the sport, if I'm still feeling, I, and then I figured out, obviously, like there was reasons why I was feeling what I was feeling. Mm. I digested, I figured it out. And I had told myself like, you know, it's, it's not that I don't love the sport. There's just other aspects of it that, you know, 
shook me up a little bit but i think during covid yeah during covid was a huge um spiritual journey for me like a huge uh journey with my faith that really mm -hmm. pulled me out yeah and now we're back to like normal a little bit and we're able to compete and stuff and i feel like i only did like three competitions in the past few of what uh the last few months and that was like my first three out of like two years of covid mm -hmm. how long been in covid it's the first time i yeah. you know, so it was really good to be back and I feel better now. You know, I train different. I even, you know, I even train different. I move different. I feel different because like I said, I had to sit down and, and deal with how I felt and deal with um, how I felt my faith, you know, yeah. happened to that. Yeah. And I feel super light, you know, I feel a lot better. So it's, I feel like that was a, yeah. Huge time so right there. Really no, uh, I, I, no, I was just going to say, I, I, I definitely like agree with kind of everything you're saying, just like the sentiment in, in terms of like COVID for me ended up being a time where like I really had to sit down and like soul search, you know what I mean? Like, especially with like football, I was, that was my last year. I'm going into my last year and, you know, just trying to figure things out. And, you know, during that time it was like, I didn't know whether I was going to come back and finish my last year. Didn't know what they was going to bring us back. So um, it, it was definitely a time, a very transformative time, I would say. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it like forces you to really like. And that's oh. the best way to describe it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. Very, um, it's either you stay still or you evolve. Is what it kind of felt like. Essentially, essentially. Um, and I kind of wanted to, because I'm I'm gonna touch back with the COVID thing as well. But um, I wanted to touch on the the Olympics. What was the feelings there? Like you were representing a whole country. You know what I mean? Like, how did you feel? Did you feel pressure? Like, well, what was that? That's the thing, like for me, people always ask me like the the pressure part. I don't really I don't think I've ever really felt that, mm. you know, because um, I was raised to be confident in my abilities. Like the way I function is I, I trust my faith. I believe in my faith. Like I believe in my God. I believe in my team, which is like, my, you know, my mom, my brothers. I believe the people who are behind me and believe in myself. I know mm -hmm. what I can and cannot do at the moment. You know what I mean? I know mm -hmm. what I can and cannot control. So um, the, I don't think it was pressure. I just think that um, it was definitely eye opening. <laughs> it was bigger. It was bigger than than uh, a lot of the events I've been to. Like I've been to world championships and things like that. But their venues is kind of the same. You know, the same magnitude, but it feels different. Okay. It's for some reason okay. it's just you just feel different. And um, like I said, I was young there compared to a lot of the women who are in my category. So for me, like I said, like. For me, building up to the getting to the Olympics, I wasn't even thinking because, like I said, from a child, I was just fighting and I like to win. The objective is not to lose. So that's how I've always been. And then I started to trans um, transition to the adult world. And my mom had told me, like, yo, you can just go. You can go to the Olympics. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, can I? <laughs> so right. That's pretty much how that happened. So then I ended up qualifying. And yeah, getting there was a whole different. It was a whole different energy for me. It was super cool. And. Um, I love representing my island. And I love the people of my island. And they're so supportive. Win or lose, you know, they have your mm -hmm. back. They're supportive of you. They want you to step up and do better. And they want you to, you know, overcome those challenges that you would have, you know. Obviously, that win would have been great. But yep, they still, right. they're still behind it. So it was an amazing feeling to know that I represented them, you know. Yeah, cool. that, was, that, was a, that was an opportunity of a lifetime, um, yeah. regardless of the, you know, the outcome of it. Um, yeah. And just to kind of, you know, go back to the conversation in terms of the COVID. Um, you mentioned how those times that you felt like you, you sort of started questioning things a little bit in terms of, you know, your love for the game, which was one of the things I was questioning during that time too, because it's like, damn, do I really, can I really just keep going? You know what I mean? So. Um, That's kind of hard because like so many people around that, you know, mm -hmm, who, mm -hmm. who ask you questions, who are constantly saying things. And you're like, man, I'm just. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying, trying to figure to it out myself. myself. Right, right. Let me, let me feel it and I'll let you know. Right, so right. That's what made it a little more difficult, you know. For me, it was always questions about it. So I always had to, like, hear it more before I could digest it myself, you know. But And, and I think oftentimes people, people sort of get the sentiment where, like, the game is always supposed to just be fun. And, you know, training is always supposed to be fun. And I always say, like, it's not more so that it's fun. It's kind of like sometimes mm -hmm. it's just a discipline aspect of it. It's like. I, maybe I don't want to be here today, but I just got to use my discipline to show up today. You know what I mean? Like, can you explain how that relates to your game? Like, Well, uh, with our sport, like I said, it's like a full contact. There's so many aspects to it. We got to be able to 
have the stamina of like a soccer player or a track and field player. We got to have the agility of a gymnast. You know, we just got to have it all. I've up seen your footwork too. I've seen yeah, your man, footwork. Yeah, man, have that footwork. Like, <laughs> there's a lot that goes to it. And obviously there's so many parts of it that you enjoy. And then, right. uh, but discipline, like that's the one thing I tell everybody, like you have to have it. That's just mm. something you have to have. And I, there's a lot of people that I would help and I would teach and I would talk to, but I tell them like, I can't make you, win you know what i'm saying i can't right. make you have the fire in your stomach to want to win to n- not want to lose i can't make you have want the desire to be world champion i can't do that for you that's something you got to do on your own right mm-hmm. you have to have the discipline to wake up like for the last last week i was feeling it too come on we're feeling it i'm i'm training every day i was training i was training and i said like okay should i take a break today but then i know i was like no, because that means I have to because I have to take a break the next uh, two days later. I have mm. to take a break in two days. So I'm going to mess my sc- So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. And you just go. You got to do what you got to do because that discipline is what's going to drive you. Like motivation is not always going to be there. Right. You know, right. people are not always going to be there around you. To pump you Your up. parents ain't going to be there to tell you every day. Come on. You know, whatever motivates you is not going to always be there. Mm-hmm. So you have to like really count on yourself. And I think um, that's why I like training the way I do. Right now, I currently like I train pretty much. I don't train with a team of people. It's okay. pretty much on my own. And my mom is my coach, so my mom is here. You know, I live with you know she's here with me, so she comes and she'll come in the gym and work with me when I need it. You know, and I have my younger brother who's competing again, so we work together and we do what we gotta do. But pretty much, it's I like to do that on my own. It's been like that for a couple, a lot of years now. But I just think it pulls something different out of me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm compared to me training with a whole group of people or doing a whole big camp, I can do it. And it's, it's a good to change the atmosphere sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, that's a good mental challenge. You know what I mean? To get yourself in there and work and do what you have to do to make sure you get the job done. You know, right. that's where the discipline comes in. Cause like I said, for me, it's hard because it's pretty much on my own right. by choice, but that's why. And so that way I could pull that discipline out of me and say, you know what? But I feel like that discipline was always in me since I was a kid. Cause like mm-hmm. I said, the martial arts aspect of it pulled that out of you. You know what I mean? You want to make sure you pass your test to get your next belt. You want to make sure you can lead the class. You want to make sure you can do, you know, to be prepared. So that discipline was pretty much always in me, I think. And how I used to watch my mom, how she was raising us, I knew she had, you know, she was always, you know, on point with what she has to do, what she has mm-hmm. to get done. There's five of us. So she was, you know, in different ages, so all over the place. So uh, I think watching how she would move too was very something that pulled discipline in me too naturally. So that's discipline is a huge piece of it. Huge. Yeah, uh, this, this discipline ends up being the distinguishing factor between mm-hmm. you know getting things done and you know just talking about it essentially. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. So I think one of the things you also mentioned mentioned was um, it kind of sounded like mentorship in a, a little bit, like you know working with younger athletes. Is that something that you also do as well? Like. Well, uh, growing up through the Taekwondo, I talk, I used to teach during high school too. So like, even in high school, they used to ask me like, Hey, would you want to do an after school program, you know, for the school? And I would say, like, oh, wow. I would, but I'm already, you know, I'm already, oh, teaching. Have ob- I'm already obligations, you know, I already yeah. had, I already had uh, things to do like that. So, um, and pretty much in our sport, well, I don't want to say the sport, but in the martial arts side of it, that's pretty much what you do. You know, you get your black belt, or even if you're a higher rank, you know, you're there to help the other people. You don't just get your stuff and be out, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's how we were raised, you know, in our school in our dojang, that's not how we were taught to do. So um, pretty much that's what I was doing. I was teaching there at, right after school, I was teaching there and then trying to find time in between to do my training for mm-hmm. what I need to do. But yeah and even today i go i go around when i meet people or they you know come to me and they ask me things you know i don't i don't i don't mind it and we um i usually find some good conversations with that and i used to like shy away from that a little bit you know not not too much not putting too much um into something like that Mm -hmm. because like for me i want the medals i want in order to say what i want to say you know what Mm -hmm. i mean that's just yeah yeah. you you want the work to speak for itself essentially right so um for example not winning the olympics was something that hit me d- deep you know yeah. it hits me I didn't think I don't think about what other at the moment I wasn't thinking about what other people were feeling about me you know yeah. I was feeling what I felt about me like dang right. you know so sometimes I'd shy away because of that because I'm like you know yeah I I can tell you things but in my head I was like mm, but I want to I want to get what I want first I want to win my medal so mm-hmm. I can show mm-hmm. you type of thing but right. I had to come to like I said sitting in COVID made me realize like I have a lot to say to them. I have done so much and I can teach somebody something like mm-hmm. a lot more. So, and I, I started to step into that, um, that role more. 
And I don't think um, I'm not really um, into doing it after I'm done, you know, like right. helping people when I'm done. Like I'm into it, doing it while I'm doing it, you know, so at the same time they can see. But also it's more of a thing of just, you know, I, I have the time now. So let me yeah. just. And that's just how I function. You know, I, 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 nothing against people who wait until they're done. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I do like being more hands-on like that. For example, when we go to competitions, they see me there. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not just talking to them and telling them what I did or what I used to do. Um, they see me there winning and then they get to see and talk to me. You know, that's how I like to do it. I'm more mm -hmm. of the, um, I'm more of the, in, what, per, more that, personal. Okay. I like that one-on-one -on -one, more personal things like that because I like to reach people that way you know mm -hmm. and I like um so yeah I think I stepped in more into that role like uh mentoring people in the sport and and even people my age you know mm -hmm. the age doesn't mm -hmm. you know it doesn't doesn't, it doesn't yeah. negate anything so you know yeah I mean? it's it's everywhere from like young people to people my age you know and I always try to tell people like I try to do what I do um to guide the people after after me, mm -hmm. but also to shed a light on the people before me, you know, because right. there were people before us, there were athletes before us who are setting the tone, who are setting the, the path for us, especially in our sport. It wasn't always like this good, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like now the athletes get to get paid for if they win a competition and things like that before, it was just, you do it because you love it, right. you know, you, you right. do it because, you know, and still it's a sport that you gotta do it with love, you know, you can't just do it just to do it. This is not a sport for that. And I'm sure yeah. it's a like football it's like there's yeah. there's not a sport you can just do it just because like you have to have some type of passion for it or some type of desire for it so um but yeah I think um that's pretty much the role I stepped into too at the same time as competing but I enjoy that role a lot too so okay. it's, a, it's a good uh it's a good um other side to it for me to also you know release some of the things you know I think um I think it was a really good um I don't know I don't know how to describe it I don't want to say it's like a side thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. But it's, it's something that you do along with. Yeah, it. I yeah. added another piece to it to to bring more love into you know because that's what I loved about the sport too is that I used to get to teach people about it. I used to get to teach people how to defend themselves and if something had. So I saw that's what I um that's what I missed about it, and I added it back. So I I think that helped a lot. And I think that that adds to uh, your passion as well too. Like when you're able to not only just take what you know, because it's not enough to, to have a gift or to learn something and then to hoard it to yourself or hoard that knowledge yeah. to yourself. It's like, you got to pass that on. You know what I mean? Like there's people that's coming behind you and yeah. you know, God gives us certain things, not just for us, for our consumption, but to also yeah. pass it down for other people. You know, there's people that's going to, you know, take those same steps. And um, it seems like your approach has is, is been like a kind of walk with me kind of approach. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, I'm doing it, but also walk with me as well. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Cause, you know, I have, I have a younger sibling, you know, so for me having younger siblings got to, that's probably where it comes from naturally. Cause I kind of want him to see that I'm doing it. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. pretty much my drive too, is like, I have him watching me. So I don't want, you know, um, to wait until I'm done to start trying to get him to do what he has to do. Like, no, right. you can do it at the same time. Like right now he hasn't competed in like a decade you know and now he saw how i was competing and he saw he likes the game now and he likes how it is and he found his love for it again like before he stopped he got into school you know he's doing track and basketball and things like that and we let him you know if that's what he's if that's what he was more passionate about so um but now he's like you know he really loves how the sport is and he's he's watching me doing what i'm doing and he's saying like yo you know what i can do it too so it's like yes you can and now I pull them in there and we're moving or working. So I think he's a good example of that, like how I function with them. You know what I mean? And I, it's a beautiful thing to see. It's a super beautiful thing. Like he's my sibling, but to watch how that could help other athletes and other kids and other people, even parents, I've met parents and a lot of parents talk to me about how their kids are. Um, I have advice for like parents too, you know, mm -hmm. because my mom's my coach. Right. So they all want right. that type of, um, they all want that type of that um, dynamic. Energy. So yeah, that dynamic. So um that's just pretty much what I say you know my mom's my coach but it took a minute to separate that like mom from coach it took yeah a minute. yeah it took, <laughs> it took a while because you know all you hear is your mom you know yelling at you talking about kick like so, <laughs> all, all you hear. but um so but I figured it out you know we got that balance in there and um I think that took more of not her side but more of my side like okay. I said to sit down and to digest what I have to do who I am what I need to do what I need to be um, how I'm supposed to spread what I know and give what I have, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, and that's pretty much, that's also how we were raised. You know, you may not have a lot, but you have something that somebody could 
could use you know mm-hmm. you have something you know your whether it's your voice whether it's a piece of you know your mind or anything like that there's mm-hmm. something that somebody could you can help somebody in some way there's always a way so that's pretty much um how I took this so yeah um um with the square aspect that's how I took it you know mm-hmm. I have done a lot I may have not won like Olympics or I haven't like you know had the timing of doing certain things but I won a lot and I've mm-hmm. done a lot I've seen a lot I know a lot so I just give what I can and that's pretty much um how it's been so far so yeah and that's 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 amazing because you know even and just going through you know your ten year or whatever the case may be um you've gained a, a wealth of experience from not only you know just your own background but all the people coaches and things that you have um around you um I think that's the part as athletes that sometimes we might overlook is like you don't have to you know kind of wait until the career is over to make a difference or just even yeah, yeah. And you don't know how you're making a difference because sometimes right. you don't see the difference you know what I mean you don't you don't see the impact you're having on other people so that's what the, that's what was happening to me I wasn't seeing it I was for a long time I was just doing my job and just fighting and fighting like yeah people come up to me and take pictures and talk to me and you know they want to meet me and things like that but still like I I took that in when it happened mm-hmm. but a lot of the time when I'm moving I don't think so like um like I said when I had my like hard time of like getting over how I felt about the Olympics and things right. like that I was still competing but I wasn't me you know I wasn't my best self I wasn't my crazy self like people like to watch me I wasn't being myself and I knew that but I just didn't know why yeah. you know what I mean yeah so I I just knew something was off but I didn't know what but I forgot that there's people behind me you know what I mean mm-hmm. there's people who are watching there's people who see me and want to be you know how I am or things like that and I forgot about that and then I remember like COVID made me sit down and think about that and I said hey you know what I, and that's pretty much what my motivation was too. When I started, like when I started to do more in the square, I started to say like, I want to show people that it's possible, you know, mm-hmm. like people my age are people who didn't get a chance to see the next day. You know, there's some people who didn't wake up today, you know, right. and they right. had goals and dreams. So in my head, I wanted to like compete for them and let them know, you know, do something to show that things are possible. You know what I mean? You have to just go try and go get it. So that's pretty much how my mindset was for a long time. And I lost that, but then I got it back a little bit. So it's a super, uh, super great. It was a super uh, experience for me to go through all that. So most definitely, most definitely. And the only thing I could do, you know, is just continue to encourage you to do that. And, you know, I, I've always made it clear, like you've been somebody that's definitely, you know, inspired me um, in terms of just, you know, staying on that grind and things like that. So, um, yeah. and just to, just to kind of ask what's, uh, so you're doing all these things. Um, what, what's what's next for Crystal Weeks? Five years from now, what do you kind of want your you know legacy to be? And even if it's not like pinpoint clear, just what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to leave behind? Well, for me, I I do see far ahead like that. You know, I'm a person who who obviously plans ahead like that. But um, for the sport aspect, we have our 2024 Olympics coming up. So first things first is to get that done and get that medal. Um, but step by step, there's things in between there. I want to make sure I get my world medal. I want to make sure I get my next Grand Prix medal. I want to make sure I get all the things that I want to get done in the sport within this time frame. So, um, but within the next five years, like I said, yeah, become that world champion. However many times it needs to be, um, however many times it needs to be that Grand Prix, how many times it needs to be Olympian, you know. But first, we're going to start with that. We're going to start there. We're going to do everything we need to do, secure what we need to secure, and get to that uh, get to that next Olympics and make sure I show out and do what I'm supposed to do and just keep inspiring people. I just want to make sure I keep doing my best to let people know that it's possible. I want to keep making sure that people have their faith and stay strong in their faith, whatever really, whatever really it is, you know. Um, but just make sure that they're solid in that, solid in their foundation. If I could help somebody just by saying one little thing or – just talking to somebody, I'm willing to do it. And I just want to keep making sure I can be that type of motivation or influence for somebody, you know? So yeah, that's pretty much my goals right there is just to make sure I keep doing my job um, as a person in the sport and out of the sport. That's mm-hmm. important. Because you know, like, like we said, we're, we're more than athletes. And that took me a minute to figure out, you know? So um, we just want to be more than athletes at this point because we're not, that's not all we are, right. you know? We're, right. There's so much more to us and so much more with the sport and without the sport, you know? And that's what we try to reiterate to people too, where you don't have to be great in the sport. You can be great being a doctor. You can be great being a lawyer. You can be great being a teacher, garbage, uh, sanitation. You can be great postal. You can be great at whatever you want to do, but just whatever you want to do, be great at it. You know what I mean? Not just 
us as athletes, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I love that message. I love that message because that, that seems to be, but well, that's the message that I continue trying to preach to people. It's like, you know, you know, you play a sport, that's part of who you are, um, but it's, right, not, it's not, it's not the entirety of who you are, essentially. No. That took that's, that took a minute for me to get to. That was a lot because, like, like I said, you're brought up in the sports combat, so it's like you're brought up like you're a machine. You know, mm-hmm. you don't lose, you don't do this, you don't do that, and you don't feel like it took a lot because it's you know, you're you have to realize that it's not all about the sport. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you're you're somebody without it. So I think that's what the difference was with me. With after the Olympics, I couldn't figure out. I was like, yo, I lost this, but then that made me question, like, what the heck, like what am I doing? You know what I mean? Like, what did I do? Who am I? You know, that made me question a lot. So that was a good point right there. It's a good point. Solid, solid. Um, And this is just kind of a little off top. Well, not off topic, but the gear that you guys wear, like, is that heavy? Yeah. Not really. It's, it's heavier than our normal. um, We have different systems now. Like we have electronic, we have um, just the ones we use for like just regular padding with training. The electronic ones obviously have a little more, a little more weight to it. Yeah. Um, but for somebody like me, for my category, I fight heavyweights. So for Olympic, I'm a middleweight, but we combine weights for Olympic and stuff like that. So we're heavy in middleweights competing. And for me, I have to wear a size four. And for me, I'm not like heavyweight, you know, I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, thick like that in yeah, the yeah. stomach. Or anything. That's the, the, <laughs> the protector doesn't wrap around the way yeah. So it's a little baggy. <laughs> But um, it could be, but you know what? That's just something we got to handle. You got to get over it, figure it out, make it work for you. And that's just, for a minute, I didn't like it, but you got to get over it. It's, it's a part of it. It's what you have to do. But yeah, it's a little, it could be a little heavy if you want it to be. I'll say, I'll say okay. that. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, we touched a little bit about the, your, you know, your mental aspect, like where your mind is at before a fight. I kind of want to dive into a little bit because one of the things my coach used to, he used to show us like videos of Mike Tyson before fights, whatever. And it's crazy. It's crazy because yeah, yeah. yeah, Mike Tyson used to always say like before a fight, he used to dream like he would actually lose the fight. Like he used to think he was going to wow. get beat. So he stepped in the ring and he was like, yo, I'm a god. Like I'm nobody can touch me. I'm undefeated. Yeah, yeah. I'm untouchable. <laughs> things like that. So, and I always kind of took that too. It was kind of like Oh, that's, that's that's interesting. The best fighter thought like that, you know what I mean? So, like, what what's your like mental like? Where you at before a fight? Where you at during the fight? Like, how, how does that, what does that look like? Uh, it's kind of funny that you said like Mike Tyson. Like my my grandmaster is super like he loves Mike Tyson mm-hmm. and he loves his energy mm-hmm. and he always calls me the female Mike Tyson because the way I hit and the way I move, where it's like I'm hitting you with no remorse, like you know, it's just doing but then outside outside of the ring i'm the nicest person you'll ever meet i'll make you you know we have a great yeah, time right. but in there i'm taking you out you know what i mean but he used to try to show me things like that too i hear nothing but mike tyson so it's kind of funny that you brought that up but for me before competition um my like ritual kind of starts the day before because like we have our weigh-ins the day before mm-hmm. and then compete so for me i just um i'm a light person you know i like to be like i don't like to be super super focused and okay, over okay, over yeah. you know you get mad all of a sudden you know i don't want i don't know I don't anxious yeah, yeah you know for me i don't get nerves not that nervous nerves are a bad thing you know yeah, being yeah, nervous yeah. is not a bad thing necessarily but i pretty much get that like i want to just go you know mm-hmm. that's why i have to remain calm and just be super chill um but the mindset is the same thing where um um i just the biggest part for me is how I maintain how calm I am because I'm I'm um, comfortable with how I feel with my preparation. Mm-hmm. I never feel like um, I always pray before my um, my trainings and I say, you know, God, just make sure I'm doing something that will help me, you know, get my job done. You know, I'll do mm-hmm. the rest. But just make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, don't let me train away. I'm not, you know, that's going to take me off of my course and things like that. So and I and I'm confident in that God's not letting me do things that's not going to benefit or help my um my winning or help me uh, do my best performances so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, that holds me down you know I'm confident in that so like pretty much the mindset is I focus on what I have to do I always do this thing where before I um the night before I sleep for the competition I think about all the um I uh I call like the what ifs so it's like I think about everything like they could possibly do and I imagine myself reacting to that like you know like an image type of training yeah visualization Yeah, I visualize a lot. So I pretty much hold that. And I, for example, if somebody throws like a back leg kick at me, what would I do? 
and I figure out how many ways I would react to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? So I think about how many things I would do. You know what I mean? So I just think about all the things that I would do, and that pretty much makes a makes up a lot of the confidence and the calmness that I have in me. And like I said, I just trust my coaches. I trust myself. My uh, my team and I have 100% faith in God. So I just, I'm super chill, super relaxed. Obviously now the day of competition, I'm a little more serious, you know, I'm a little more um, focused, like more locked in, but I'm okay. still inside. I'm feeling like super light, you know, still mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I already did all the things I know I need to do. I'm fine. Um, but on the outside, you know, obviously I, I show what I show, you know, I show what I feel on the, um, on the outside. So I just, it's pretty much super calm for me. My fight days are always very calm for me. I don't, um, I have to be calm. Cause like I said, I get a little anxious cause I just want to go, you know, mm-hmm, I just want to mm-hmm. fight. I just want to kick them. I just want to get my medal and just, that's what happens to me. So yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing, but for me, I turn, I tend to get overzealous sometimes. So it's like in the, in the, in the ring and I have that energy. I just want to go. Yeah. So I just start just going and that's not necessarily a good thing all the time. So I learned to just be super calm about it super chill and yeah i like to laugh and things like that i eat my food i'm just super like the the mental the mental state is super chill for me when it comes to that so the competition day and pre-competition it's super relaxed um not around a lot of people you know because everybody has their own energy and nerves and things like that if yeah. i can help if i'm in passing and i'm talking to them i can do that but i don't sit around <laughs> i don't sit around that all day long because yeah. i don't want to give it you know so pretty much that's what I do. Just lock in, uh, sit with myself, sit with my team and just enjoy. And that's pretty much it. Enjoy the, enjoy the experiences. That's pretty much all. That's pretty much how my mindset is. That's amazing. That's amazing. Are you bumping any type of music? Like what's, what's your go-to like? Uh, it varies. It really does because, uh, for example, this last Grand Prix, um, sometimes, okay. Sometimes I play the music, but sometimes I don't, but this last Grand Prix I went to, um, I was playing, what's that? There's like this Beyonce song. I never listened to, it's so weird because I just never, I don't listen to Beyonce the competition day, but it varies, like I said. But this last one I did, um, I played this song, Be Alive or something like that. I think it's Be Alive. Um, I think, I think the people might want to know like how this, it goes. Serena Williams. Okay. Um, I think the people might want to know how it goes. Like, can, can you, uh... see what, see, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's like, uh, <laughs> Uh, it's like i feel so good to be alive and okay then okay going, i got a million miles on me I bet, I bet. the words hit me different that time you know because like i said the the um sometimes what i do is i'll listen to music the day before or whatever and then whatever hits me in the moment whatever i'm feeling that most um resonates what i'm feeling within the pre, uh, pre-competition i listen to that i stick mm-hmm. to that mm-hmm. sometimes it's like nardo wick or you know something crazy you know mm-hmm. again thug life and all this stuff i just yeah. get crazy but in that particular moment, like I said, I was super calm because I prepped for it. You know, I've been out of competition for a long time. I was relaxed. I was calm. I knew what I can do. What I can do is top 32 athletes in the world. And I'm one of them. So I was like, you know what? I'm here. I belong here. My coach knows I belong here. God wouldn't put me here. I couldn't mm-hmm. take him off. I couldn't win. So that song, the words, if anybody listens to it, the words of that song pretty much resonate with how I am because obviously with this time frame they question you know if you're still competing yeah some people were saying like oh did you retire and things like that but it's like no we just didn't have like for me I didn't have competitions that I could get to at the moment yeah. you know what I mean? yeah. so it's COVID there's so many aspects to it now so um there was those was I was I was dealing with a lot of those questions so um the words of that song was hidden deep for me and you know we have a million miles on me they want to see how far we go you know what I mean they mm-hmm. want to see trying to stop us they can't break it down. you know it was really good for me and it wasn't like too much it was just super chill so I think that's pretty much but like I said my music varies for competition okay. depends on depends on who I got to go with depends on the day it really does it just it changes depends on how you feeling how I'm feeling right okay. it changes all the time okay and um so I did a little research you got a nickname Bam Bam where did that come from <laughs> <laughs> um, it came from well, I, if I remember correctly, it came from one of my friends, uh, the original, original, where it came from was one of my friends who's also like amazing athlete, world champion and things like that. Um, um, her father, um, I was training with them for a little bit and things like that. And her father um, brought that up because of how I hit 
mm. how hard I hit on the on the gear. You know how hard I hit people. It's like you know, it's like swinging the bat. It's like bam, bam. You know, it hits all right, the, all right. you know, from the chest. You know, the body and the head. You know, it sounds like that. And you can hear it when I hit. You can hear it. So that's pretty much where that came from. It's pretty much came from the power I have when I attack. So that's that's where that came from. Okay, okay. Just don't mess with it. I don't know. Um, no. but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I just want to um, just kind of close the remarks and things like that. Um, again, I just wanted to, you know, take the time to appreciate you for coming on the show. Um, you know, you've touched yeah. on a lot of things, you know, your upbringing, you know, your mental, um, you know, your mental height, where you at um, before your game, before your competitions, things like that. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, continue to encourage you to keep going, you know, keep doing whatever it is that, you know, fi lights that fire within your heart. Um, and uh, I pray that God continues to give you the strength and courage to, you know, continue to, you know, glorify Thank God and, 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 and do the best that you can do. So um, I appreciate that. most definitely. And just lastly, just how I end it as well is, you know, what's like just one message that you would like to leave with listeners? Well. Hmm, that's a good one. Well, I mean, really, like I said before, is um, make sure you're confident in whatever you're trying to do in life, you know, make sure sometimes you're doing things that you're not sure you're supposed to be doing. Like, you know, some people take paths that they're not sure is the right path for them. But if you're on it and you're taking it, try to do your best at whatever you're doing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Try to give it your best go because you never know if it's really right for you. You know, obviously, you're going to question it if you're not giving your best. So I feel like whatever you're doing, try to give your best, put your best foot forward, no matter what it is. Like, I don't care what it is, whether you're trying to learn how to cook, whether you're trying to be an athlete, whatever you're trying to do, just make sure you put your best foot forward and always keep your faith in what you're doing. You know, sometimes it's, you might get a little lost sometimes and that happens. It's normal. You know, we have different stages that it happens. Everybody's different, but there's always a way out of it. You know what I mean? There's always a, a, a brighter side to everything that we're going through. Mm -hmm. And it's super possible for you to achieve the life you want. You just have to make sure you're disciplined and just put your best foot forward at all times. And just make sure you keep people around you who are supporting you, who um, see the best in you, who only help you evolve. You know what I mean? Don't be around people who um, cause you to step backwards and things like that. You know, try to keep people around you who are going to lift you up and, and make you better. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, I just think, yeah, that's pretty much the biggest part is to just make sure you take care of yourself and take care of your mental space, because that's a very big thing, whether you're an athlete or not, your mental space is super important. Make sure it's a peaceful place to be in, you know, and a happy place to be in, because you only really have yourself to um, sit with a lot of the time. So you just have to make sure that's, in, that's, um, that's a peaceful spot. But yeah, like I said, just make sure you do the best that you can do in everything you do, anything you do to try to be your best. Yeah, I love that. Love that. Um, yeah, so that that pretty much concludes today. I want to thank all the listeners for, you know, tuning in and um, taking the time out to, you know, learn and just, you know, listen from people's experiences as well. So um, you guys have a nice day. Mm -hmm.